Hello and welcome back. Well, this is our final episode of the FJ43, the hardtop version. If you recall from the last episode, episode number two, we finished up some loose ends with the vehicle itself, the model itself, and we got a pretty good start on the base, working out some sort of a mountain scene here where I guess we're going to come up to, I think it's going to be basically a washout, some, you know, like a landslide is taken out the, in front of the road here. So this is as far as this guy is going to be able to go. In terms of the guy, well, we're going to use this T-Rex or Trex figure. It's a 3D printed figure. Very, very nice. And now we'll just spend some time painting him out. I'm beginning now to start to appreciate the base colors being, or the base layers being applied using the airbrush. It does allow for a much smoother finish, and that's something I learned working on the Stormtrooper, the 116th Stormtrooper, is how to use multiple thin layers, and that each layer really does make a difference. I'm also using retarder this time as well, another sort of a technique or trick, if you will, that I learned and have come to appreciate when painting figures. Just a little extra drying time, and it does allow for a bit of blending, even with the acrylic color, so I do appreciate that. I established the initial base colors or flush tones using the airbrush, kind of going from uh, the base color all the way up to something that's kind of a rosy pink. And now I can come back in with the brush and start just reestablishing or deepening the shadows and establishing some of those highlights. As I'm watching back on the video here and adding these narratives, I'm realizing that I don't necessarily have a lot to say about the figure painting. I think the, the images themselves really capture what's going on here. So this will be one of those videos. Hopefully I'll choose some nice music that you might enjoy, let's say. And we'll just let the videos kind of roll and we can watch the process. And of course, I'll jump back in from time to time and let you know what's going on and things that I think that should be highlighted and are important. So here we go. One of those kind of funny behind the scenes sort of things. So right now I'm starting to add some color to the figure. So we're working on his cap or his beret here. And the first color I chose is blue, thinking, well, it's going to be a nice little subtle pop of color on the scene. And yeah, it'll even match the color of the SUV. This gets changed about two or three times. And I think the final color that I have on the on, on the final scene, his beret is a darker reddish color. So he goes through a few transformations. Let's put it that way. Following basically the same pattern as I did on the face, I'm just kind of working my way down the body, if you will. So I've got the colors blocked out more or less, in this case the shirt. And now I'm just coming back in again with the, the paintbrush and adding some of those deeper shadows in more very specific areas. Doing a little bit of profiling or even outlining, if you will. Following the same idea, I'll block out the colors on his trousers as well, to kind of give him a kind of a khaki sort of appearance, just real casual, you know, kind of outdoorsy sort of garb here. You might notice there already are from the airbrush some shadows and highlights on the figure. So these these layers that I'm putting in as I color block the the base colors basically, they're they're fairly light. So a lot of these highlights and shadows continue to show through the color blocking, and I'll capitalize that as I move forward here in order to again accentuate the highlights and deepen some of these shadows using the brush. I tend to be one of those painters that I have a real difficulty just starting one place and finishing that out and then moving to the next and finishing out that area. So you'll see me going back and forth quite a bit here as I try to go back in and rebalance certain areas. So now that I have the shirt done, I have the trousers done, I can see some of the context overall. So it's not unusual for me to go back and forth, add extra highlights, say, to the shirt area or the pants or deeper shadows and things like that. So there'll be, there'll be some back and forth here. But that's, you know, I've learned that that's just the way I work and it's comfortable, comfortable for me. And 
And then finally we move up to the fellow's sport jacket here. Again, keeping in that kind of a khaki, outdoorsy sort of a feel. Chose just a lighter shade of basically the same colors as the trousers. He's color coordinated. He looks dapper. He looks like he's ready for adventure. careful eye will notice that we're changing our colors on our cap or our beret so he's going from the blue color now to a brownish gray color and once again this will change <laughs> again one more time before the final before the final placement This gets me to the point where I pretty much need to set it down for a little while, set my figures down. It's close. It's getting close to where I want it to be, where the final might end up being. But I let it set down and actually let the paints dry for a few hours, come back and take a look at it with a, a new fresh eye. And I'll make some changes and a little bit of highlights and tweaks here and there along the way. But we're getting close. I think it's about time that we go ahead and start working on the base and trying to see how everything is going to look when it's all put together. My friends, this is that time when I get to give a sincere thank you to my Patreon. Those are the names you see scrolling across the screen. Thank you, guys. If you enjoy this channel and would like to support it further, please consider joining Patreon. There is a link for that in the description below. Members-only videos, photos of the work in progress. We have a Discord for chats. Lots going on over there. Please consider supporting this channel with Patreon. In the last episode, I was adding, yep, I think we got to number six times that I added texture, textures, the word textures, that was the key word of the end of that video. And then over the top of that, I was adding some plaster, and that was just to unify all the shapes and surfaces here, because this will all be painted out, and we can pull out all those details with that painting process. Now that I have the outline of the mountain here, I need to work on the road, and for this, I'll be using the Sculpey. Just working it into the surface and we'll create some tire ruts and just give us the appearance of a, you know, a dirt road that's winding its way to the top of this mountain here. Adding a few textures. This is railroad ballast. Just kind of pressing that into the surface before the Sculpey dries. And there we go. We've got our base ready for paint. First layer of paint is just to unify the surface with a dark color. This just makes sure the shadows are there and I don't have any bright spots sneaking through. And that's done with a rattle can using just black, flat black paint. The next colors that I'll be painting out are with the AK acrylics. These are the exact same acrylic colors that I used to weather the vehicle itself. So now we have some harmony between the colors of weathering on the SUV and now the landscape itself. Just a quick airbrush with these colors and we'll allow this to dry and then we come to what's really one of my favorite parts of doing these types of scenes is just picking out the details. Our mountainside is a rocky mountain so we'll just be pulling out and picking out some of those, yep here's the word again, textures and just painting those in with these stone type colors.
This gets to that point in time on the diorama base where I want to add, uh, yes, I want to use that word again, textures. And matter of fact, I don't want to use that word again. I've actually looked it up in the thesaurus. Here's some of my alternatives. See if you like any of these. Feels, touches, surfaces, consistencies, qualities, grains, roughness, smoothness, coarseness, fineness. I'm not sure any of those necessarily apply to what I'm trying to do here, which is to add texture to the base. I want this to have a little bit of a grittiness to it. I want it to look like a little bit of dust and dirt. So the pigments are a fantastic way to do that here. The color I've chosen for the pigment is similar. It's not an exact match for the colors that I sprayed the base with, the acrylic colors, but it's close enough. And now when I start adding the thinner, this is just odorless thinner, and we start making washes out of this, then we'll kind of incorporate it and kind of blend it in with the rest of the scenery here. And in addition, in addition, I wanted to try to highlight that road, make the road stand out just a little bit more from the rocky mountainside. And then one last final touch here onto the rocky scene itself is to add what would be a, just a final wash around some of these details just to deepen those shadows. Oftentimes I'll use oil paints here. In this case I'm using the enamel slimy green and it's just this really dark green color enamel and I'm just applying those around some of these rocks and, and some of these nooks and crannies and it just gives that, it gives that kind of a mountainside appearance like there's moss and lichen and things like that um, that are evident here. And then finally, the last details is just a little bit of plant life here. Now, this, I'm, in my mind, I'm imagining this to be maybe some sort of an alpine location, so above the tree line. Um, and so there wouldn't be a lot of trees here, but there would be some, some low shrubs and bushes. And I did want to add a little bit of greenery. I don't want this to be a terribly stark environment. After all, this guy's trying to drive all the way up to the top to get a great view of the scenery, and he wants to go through this wonderful landscape. And then finally, just a couple of really highlights of green. I'm using the laser cut ferns here. Just a brighter green, just to really catch your eye. Here we are with our final scene. And yeah, it's kind of a simple scene. It didn't take a ton of time to work. Most of it's paintwork, quite frankly. But I do think it captures the idea of a mountain road, a single track mountain road. And then to kind of accentuate the idea that this was a landslide or a washout on the side of the base, went ahead and cut out some of the the base facade there and added some of the debris so that we have that illusion of the washout. Now we have our figure and he's just standing there like, you know what, I drove all day to get up here to the top and look what happened, the road just ends. In these final few images here, as I'm starting to spin the, in my hands, you'll notice the rooftop is still the old rooftop before it's been repainted. And this will start to bring us to the conclusion of this episode and the three-part series of the FJ43 SUV. I hope you enjoyed this series. We did a few th different things here, weathering with the acrylic paints, a simple base, working with the 3D printed figure. That was nice. If you enjoyed this series, please hit that like and subscribe. If you enjoy this channel, please consider supporting it on Patreon. The link, of course, for that is below. What's coming up? Well, who knows? <laughs> I'm behind the times here. It's, so we'll, we'll figure out something. We'll get something out to you as quickly as possible. Until the next time we talk, take care, everybody. And, of course, happy modeling. See you soon.